everyone, Redneck Computer Geek here. Everybody always asks me for wintertime cleanup videos and plowing videos and things like that. This is not one of those. This is an advice video. The real reality is I live on the coast of Maine. During most snowstorms, we usually have 20 mile per hour winds and a camera on a tripod in 20 mile per hour snowstorm winds just doesn't usually tend to work. But I would love to pass on years worth of advice on being able to clean up snow using your lawn tractor with a plow or using your lawn tractor with a snowblower or a regular snowblower walking around. Now, when it comes to dealing with snow, I have a thousand four hundred plus foot long driveway that I deal with. I deal with the entire 1,400 feet worth of driveway and all of the walkways around here using these three items. Up until about three years ago, I literally did all of it with just this unit, but the motor in this is getting tired, needs to be replaced, and we'll be working on that video this summer. Now, what we have here, we have a GT 6000. It is a older style GT and it has what is called a dozer plow made by Craftsman. The mount on the bottom of a dozer plow is more solid than a regular tip plow and this makes a huge difference if you are dealing with wet snow, if you are dealing with gravel, if you are dealing with pushing anything that is clay or anything like that. On the back of this tractor, I have just regular lawn tractor tire chains. You'll also notice that I do not run any weights on any of the tractors. And the reason being is because my particular driveway has a very straight drop off off the side of most of my driveway, which means that if I catch a front tire into that drop off, I have to be able to negotiate the machine back up onto where it is I need to get it. And I would rather have a winching point than have 200 to 300 pounds of extra weight to deal with. I would much rather that if I back the tractor off of that and I manage to break through, that I can lift the rear of this tractor and throw it or be able to easily pull it over with a rope. In the center here, we have our Toro snowblower. It is a PowerMax 726. The one thing that is majorly awesome about this snowblower that I will pass on that I love is that you can take and you can shift it around with the ball shifter assembly for the chute on the go. And when it comes to that assembly, when I first got this thing, I thought for sure that that assembly was going to be, it was going to be horrible. I was totally against it, thought I was going to hate it, figured it would ice up and all the above, but it doesn't, thanks to something I love to go and steal out of the kitchen. But we'll get back to what we steal out of the kitchen. Next, I'd like to go and talk about this MTD snowblower assembly machine. This particular one here is a white outdoor. It is a knockoff MTD. It's the same exact thing as a yard machine bug. There's a whole bunch of brands that all use this MTD platform. The easiest way to know there's an MTD platform is the very drive handle that you will see on the left hand side for most of these. Now this MTD front snowblower assembly on this is actually the Craftsman brand MTD assembly, but it clearly has a tag labeled MTD that will be on the blower assembly. Unfortunately for most of you, it will be gone if you buy it second hand. That tag is exactly where it is that snow and ice build up, and so it will have chips, it will have dings, and it will probably be missing from cleaning up and scraping ice over the years. So if yours has that tag when you get it, immediately take a picture of it because it will not last long if you have a lot of ice and snow type weather. 
So, what is each unit good for, and what is each unit horrible for? If you are dealing with a flat, a flat and a wide open area, my parking area, for example, is about 75 feet long one way, and it's about 50 to 60 feet long the other way. This is horrible for doing that area. It is absolutely atrocious for doing that. You will spend the entire like hour going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth plowing. It is horrible. On the other hand, this unit, once you get situated, that's the big problem with this. Getting this to move around and get it lined up and everything is horrible. Now, you better have a very strong right hand if you're going to use one of these. Because I swear that your bicep, by the time you are using one of these, will be three inches bigger on one side than it is on the other because you will constantly have to push this down to be able to actually turn the tractor to set it down to be able to go. If you wanna make any kind of turn at all, it doesn't matter whether it's a progressive turn or whether it's a sharp turn, you will have to pull down on this, lifting all of that weight. This bicep is going to be twice the size of this one by the time you get done plowing for the year. Now, this is amazing for open areas. That's the big deal about this. The problem is it sucks if the area is not flat. That's the reason why I do almost an entire thousand feet worth of driveway with this unit whenever possible. This unit here will do snow, totally wet, damp, horrible down the driveway and back it'll do it up to about six to ten inches worth of snow the moment you clear ten inches worth of snow you're hitting that upper level on here and you can do it and i'll talk about that idea later but what you need to do if you know you have a ten inch plus storm coming in even if you have a six inch storm coming in what you do is you go down your driveway with this and about every 20 feet down the driveway you cut a relief into the side of the driveway and what that does is as you're driving down through breaking out the snow with this it'll dump it off into that relief cut about every 20 to 25 feet and that allows you to reset with the plow and to be able to continue pushing. At about six inches, no issue whatsoever. About six inches worth of wet snow, no issue whatsoever. The moment you clear about 10 inches worth of fluffy, you better have those relief cuts that are done with this. While we're on this, it is amazing to use one of these to do walkways. Without question, walkways doing one of, this type of idea with a nine horsepower motor is a cinch. This thing does not flinch whatsoever to be in third gear out of five, doing about 16 inches worth of fluffy snow, throwing it 25 feet without ever having a qualm in the world. Walkways without question, I recommend nine horsepower motors. If you get a six horsepower or down in that ballpark, six to five, you can do up to 16 inches worth of snow, but you will do it at a pace of and your hands are gonna freeze. If you stay moving, you generate heat. Well, we're on the thing about hands and freezing. I am not sponsored by, have nothing to do with, but I swear by grabber hand warmers. I'll post a link for these. They're about $14, $15 for a 10 pack. When you pull it out, it comes with this pack. You rip it across the top. It's got one that goes in each glove. While we're on that, let's talk gloves. 
Do not ever, ever, ever use cloth gloves. These are junk. These are what you use in order to go to the bar, in order to jump from your truck to wherever it is you're going. When you're picking up the kids and you just need something to keep your hands warm while you're waiting, that's what these are for. These, if you were to feel them right now, have almost no insulation in them. I put a grabber hand warmer in the back side of my hand right about here. These are to block the wind. That's all they're for. There's almost no insulation in them. They are wind blockers. You ever see those pictures on Facebook where the person comes in and their entire beard and face and hat and everything, it is covered in snow? Those are snowblower people. If you do this, you are not going to get covered in that unless you have a really bad whiteout storm. If you do one of these two, you better like those pictures because no matter what you do, no matter how much you predict that wind, no matter how much you try, at some point, Mother Nature is going to decide you need to look like Santa Claus, and it's going to happen, so plan on it. While we're here, let's talk about this unit. Tips and tricks and things I would recommend. Pam, Pam cooking spray, vegetable oil, whatever. The last storm, this was done in all of this Pam cooking spray. This one was not. If you can't see the difference between the two, well, that's not my problem. Pam cooking spray, every single time. Top coat, center, center, bottom, edge. Every single time. Shovels. If you have a shovel and you want the snow to come off of it, Pam cooking spray. But do not ever use that shovel to do your gravel too because this will make every bit of that gravel stick onto the shovel and you'll hate it. If you're doing gravel, you want a dry shovel. If you're doing snow, you want a Pam shovel. Snow blower. So we Pam it. We Pam it, we Pam it, and this ball thing over here, we Pam this also. When you're dealing with the snowblower, remember, lift to turn, lift to turn. You're going to need snow chains, no ifs, ands, or buts. I will post a link for the standard size 20 and 18s. I will post another link for the 23-inch tire snow chains that I run. No ifs, ands, or buts. You need snow chains. If you do not have snow chains, stay inside. Let somebody that actually has the right equipment do it. Another thing you're going to need, most likely, is a booster pack. You're going to want a booster pack because the batteries that come stock in lawn tractor equipment, they do not, do not work whatsoever worth anything below about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a waste of time to use them. Don't even bother. Hook it up to your truck, hook it up to your car, hook it up to a booster pack. Do not waste your time on a lawn tractor battery. This unit here is actually running a battery that came um, out of a car. It's a 500 cranking amp car battery. This one will start on its own battery clear down to 10 degrees. This one has a lawn tractor battery. I don't even bother trying to start it at below about 30 degrees without a booster pack. Gearbox, $150. Auger assembly, $150. Stupid dumb cotter pin things in the front, the shear pins. You want shear pins. You are going to break them. I'm on my sixth storm this year. I have already broken three. The other thing you want is your drive belts. You want a spare, a spare for your spare, and preferably a spare for your spare for your spare. These units do not do wet snow. This does wet snow. 
This does not do wet snow. If you're dealing with wet snow, you will burn up your primary dry belt on your snow blower at least one storm every time. You have to go extremely slow. You have to make sure that you're listening to the chute. If yours is a manual engagement like this one is, the moment that chute stops throwing snow and it should be throwing snow, you need to slap this thing. You need to train yourself the moment you do not see snow coming out that you slap it. The reason being is because if you catch anything in that auger assembly on the inside underneath where the chute is, it will blow the belt. This is your Achilles heel. You need to pre-order them because tractor supply will be sold out, Home Depot will laugh at you, and Lowe's will not even bother going to look. Pre-order whatever belt size you need. Passing thought also that I pass on to everybody. If you're like me, gravel, bag sand, buckets of sand, all of that is a big giant pain in the neck. Up here, up here a 50 pound bag of sand goes for $9 right now. This is Black Diamond Blasting Media. And I use it for everything. I use it for the walkways. I use it for sprinkling down so that the sun will bake it and cut a path in the ice for drainage. I use it for underneath my tires when my truck gets stuck. I use Black Beauty sand all winter long because it's $10 a bag, it is cheap. You can buy it by the five gallon bucket, which is even cheaper, and you can store it for years and never have a problem with it. So I'm currently losing my voice because it's about 20 degrees out and it's a little hard to breathe out here, but let's continue with this video because we don't give up. So I'm gonna grab the camera right now. I'm gonna show you a little bit about, pl about planning ahead when you are plowing. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I meant about the relief cuts when it comes to going down my driveway. Otherwise than that, if you're not interested in seeing that idea or you know how to do that, thank you very much for watching this video. Now I'm gonna grab the camera. What I'd like to do is I'd like to point out over in here and I'm gonna use this porch area here as a reference. So this is where my line of snowbank is as of the end of January. This is where my line of snowbank will be probably by about February. The thing about plowing with a lawn tractor is you do not have the ability to push back a bank. If you have a big giant plow truck, you can go mid storm, mid, you know, month, and you can come back and you can push that bank back. So this is where my banking will be come the end of February. That is where it started. So I'm gonna step back a little bit. Whoa, almost fell over on the ice. So that porch is roughly 16 feet long. There's the backing over there on where it is that I push my plowing to. And that is the entire area of snow that ends up over here. So I come out of here I plow across here, usually with the snowblower or with the plow. And as you can see, this is my banking as of the end of January. That back there is my banking from plowing the start of this year. So you got to plan ahead on packing in. That's the other misconception that people have about a snowblower that I'd also like to point out. See, this banking here, this is a snowblower banking into this area. And that started here. It ended up here. Because what happens as you come forward with your snowblower is it's curled. And so in the center of that curl, right in there, if I'm holding it, 
you end up with a snowpack pushed up against things. So wherever you're pushing up against, it actually builds out that snowpack about four to six inches every storm. So if you push into this, like that's my stopping point, I'm now back to here with the snowblower. So you got to plan ahead on that. Even with a snowblower, you're going to end up with pushback from building the bank. A lot of people ask about walkways. So let's talk about walkways. When I start off doing that walkway, that walkway is two units wide. As the snow packs up on either side, see how you can see that big bank on that side? And you can see that that tire there is 28 inches tall. See that bank built up? As I eventually start building the bank with the plow, you're not able to get it going enough because you've got to slow down for the end of the walkway. So there's no throw to it. So that is better off done with a snowblower because the snowblower obviously throws it. But anywhere that you slow down with the plow, you're not going to have any more throw. So stuff like that, you're better off to do with a snowblower. This here, I do with the snowblower when I need to go get something. All right. So now if we come down here, what you're going to see is we got relief cuts cut in. So there's a relief cut. So this storm coming in will dump the snow here. There's a relief cut here. So the snow will dump to there. And sometimes I do it with the snow plower. Sometimes I do it with the plow itself pre-storm. See, there's a relief cut so that I can plow there. Relief cut so that I can plow off there. See, about every 20 feet or so. There's another one there. There's another one there. There's another one there. There's another one there. Once you get to the point that you have snow banks, like, look at this. This is a, this is a four foot tall reflector. So we're about halfway up that four foot tall reflector on that side. So once you get to about right in here on this scale, you're only curling it just a little bit. When I start plowing this, all of that is plowed all the way back until it finally builds up to the point I can't push it anymore. As it is right now, that's all ice banking. I get asked how I do the pond. Early season, in the light stuff, I plow the pond. Late season, I do it by snowblower. And so if you follow that all the way down through, go another 400 feet that way, turn that direction all the way to the road, I do all of that all the way. Well, there we go. Oh, headband. I forgot about the headband. These are knockoff headbands that I've been testing and stuff. They do actually work all the way down through into about 25 degrees out. Unfortunately, the batteries get glitchy at below about 25. These are knockoff. They come in a two pack. I'll post a link for these in case you're interested. I swear by these things. I converted to them this year and they have been a godsend. They, uh, they are rechargeable by USB, and you can plug them into a cell phone charger, you can plug them into your computer, you can plug them into a laptop, you can plug them into a battery bank in order to charge. Um, I charge them in my truck when I'm driving around. They're great. I love them. Definitely worth investing in. I promise after this I'll shut up. I forgot one more helpful hint I wanted to pass on. So, your carburetor here, there's a nice brand spanking new pretty one that's Chinesium that's currently leaking gas because high quality. Um, when you shut down your machine, after it is fully off, you want to set your choke to on. Now, here's the thing. What happens is... 
as your machine is flashing off any gas that is left inside of that machine, any gas that is in the upper part of the carburetor or anything, if there is any gas that is in there flashing off, it will cause your carburetor to flash freeze. If your carburetor flash freezes and your choke is not in the on position, the next time you go to start it, you won't be able to move the choke to start it. At that point, you'll have to do a two finger start. What is a two finger start? It's where you put your gloves on and you stuff your two fingers into the intake while you crank over the motor in order to hopefully choke it enough so that it will start. So there you go. There's my other survival tip on below freezing temperature storm survival. And everybody stay safe and have fun. Flood the comments with your survival how to something you would pass on if you were going to tell your children um providing that they would listen you know most kids don't listen these days but you get the idea if you got something to pass on that's a cool idea or a survival idea that helps out with dealing with winter storms leave it in the comments below have fun guys